Hey guys, today I want to talk about building a second brain cohort 12 that I was a part of and it just finished last week. During these five weeks, I learned a ton and connected with a beautiful bunch of people that were building their second brains themselves. In this video, I actually want to showcase my system to you guys. I really think I've cracked the code and I would love to see what other people think about it. For those of you who don't know what the building a second brain is, it's an online course where Tiago Forte and his team teach how you can build a digital brain. One thing to mention, is that my second brain is not just a simple capture organize distill express i actually run my whole life using my second brain as well and i have a full life operating system in it i'm a massive nerd when it comes to organization and running your life using systems and so on and so forth and i've been watching a ton of youtube videos and now i'm going to use my second brain to create youtube videos just like this one so let's see what's all the fuss about and let's go so welcome to my second brain this is actually my life dashboard uh, i will get to this last because uh, this is actually how I interact with my second brain 95% of the time but for me to show you how I use this I have to first explain what my second brain is what are the parts I have in it and how I have it set it all up using notion so here's my notion second brain uh, page and as you can see I have all these different sections uh, in the course Tiago teaches um, para which is projects areas resources and archives and you can read about that actually online. I might leave a link below for you guys to maybe learn a bit more about it. And I have it set up just like that. Um, the way I use everything is through databases. And actually, I have relational databases between all of these different databases in my second brain. I want to actually start with the simplest thing, which I think are areas. Areas are actually quite simple to follow. And these are the active areas, for example, in my life right now. I have a business section, which basically categorizes all the different areas that are business related such as my two businesses bitcoin why not we need to buy some of that my actual job that i go to as a part-time flight test engineer my youtube channel which is this channel and my personal areas consist of university which i'm almost finished with productivity which i'm passionate about life goals personal finance and so on and so forth as you see each of these are set to a card and so on and so forth. I won't really teach you guys how to use Notion in this video. If people really like to know how to set this up step by step, I might do a video like that. But for now, I just want to showcase it. So let's jump to, for example, one of my uh, areas, unessi.com, uh, which is my actual website uh, where we create websites for other course creators and um, set up their whole tech stack and course selling system and so on and so forth. As you see, uh, there is a lot of related fields and I will go through each of these fields in depth but for now what i want to show you is that each of these areas actually have something called a self-referential filter what that means is that when i collect uh, any source of information write any notes read any books have any active projects or tasks or anything i always put them all under that area and then after i put it under that area in this page i can actually filter by the area itself self-referencing and then it will always show me the updated version so for example in this area of unesi.com i have three active projects and that is being shown here so for example learn how to get more clients martin which is one of my clients ongoing support and creating unesi at version number one is actually my three different projects the way i define projects are based on energy levels and and i will have to create a complete video on how to create your energy levels through a feedback loop using your second brain so your second brain can actually improve what you actively work on and spend your time on but for now just to simplify things i have these three active projects i have read this book under this area i have these three videos and so on and so forth so let's let's for example see one of these entries never discount to get a sale uh, is actually a youtube video i watched from the future uh, on the 15th of may 2021 uh, and this is the youtube video and as you can see as i was watching this video i actually took some notes which then i can reuse why is this even good because the next time i ever want to work in this area if i want to for example work on my uh, unesi.com website i can just come on here and see what stuff have i captured what active projects i have what active tasks do i have or resources right so let's look at a different area, productivity. For productivity, I actually took the building second brain course and also captured some sources and stuff, which you can see all of that here. So if you look, I have built your second brain as still an active project because I'm still continuously working on this to improve it. For my library, I have all my personal notes that I took throughout the course under this area. And like you can see, it's exactly called course notes. 
because that's a category I have. And for example, when you go in it, I have all the course notes uh, all here. And for example, I have an active task in the productivity area called go through Skillshare classes, which I want to actually go through Ali Abdos productivity classes and stuff like that. That's about areas, right? And I don't want to really go in depth too much, but what I wanted to show you is that I can see all my captured sources and everything that relates to that specific area of my life under one specific page in Notion. And this is all updated automatically. Same thing actually goes for my projects, which is what I actually work on actively. These are my active projects. I won't get too much in detail with them, but you can see that each project, for example, has a related area, a related library, a related resource and related task. So then, for example, for finishing my thesis, which is what I'm working on right now, I have a ton of tasks open, which I still need to work on. Then there's due dates for them and so on and so forth. Uh, or, for example, for building my second brain, as I showed you before, this is now the project, not the area. You can see for the project, I have a related area, which is actually productivity. So the way I think about it as a big picture is always I have an area within that area i can have multiple projects and with it that project then i can have multiple tasks and then my resources and my captured notes or ideas or anything will then come and plug into this whole system by the way i'm just showing my active projects here so everything you see here is actually filtered and sorted and so on and so forth uh, but for example for all projects then you see all my previous projects that i've finished and actually this is how i archive things i just archive things by a tick box and i filter not to show those archives and if i ever need to go and see all of my archives i have an archive section which i can jump into and it actually shows me all all the archive stuff I've ever done. And the reason for that is that this view of that database is filtered by the archive being done, which means it has been archived. For example, the part-time YouTuber Academy Q&A wall is interesting, but I don't actively work on this. So I've archived it not to see it in my active notes and so on and so forth. So now it's actually getting quite interesting. Let's look at tasks. Tasks are actually what I work on every single day. Right now I'm finishing my thesis to so see all of my big tasks are all based on my thesis. But for example, getting some results from my thesis, the energy level of it is high because I'm really working on it. The workload is heavy lift because it's a lot of effort to do that. And um, there's a due date, which I actually have to do uh, a related area where it's related to my university because obviously it's a task for my university and the related project within that area is finish my thesis and by the way the way you make a new task with this is let's say just call this test it's not done obviously i can choose my energy level i can choose my workload i can set a date for it and then i can just choose the area from all of my active areas which for this case is university for example and my related project i can choose from my all of my active related projects now let's get into the juicy stuff capturing and how i use those captures in creating content just like this one when i read books write my own notes um, listen to podcasts twitters anything any source of capture that is out there i have it all set up to readwise for example for books through kindle to readwise to twitter the same i have uh, the save to notion extension if i want to use it anywhere and I also even have set up the Notion API for some personal notes on my phone, um, which I can do quickly with Evernote. But what I want to show you guys now is I actually filter everything based on what they are. So, for example, let's look at notes. And as you can see, this is all the notes that I've taken. I have related them all to my active projects. And if I don't find an active project for it or an area, then I actually archive it immediately, even if I took the note, because I don't want to use it. I don't want it to clutter my view, and I only want to see the things I'm actively working on. And I also can relate that note to a content output. And a content output is for me, YouTube videos. For you, it can be a blog, it can be anything else that you want to create. But why is this so good? Is because when you capture that piece of information through your own notes, through summarizing other videos, to watching anything or capturing it online through an article or a book or whatever, you can directly connect it to the output that you want to create. And this is amazing because then you can directly see that output when you go and work on that content. Um, by the way, I also have why I captured this because I want to remember why was it important for my future self because I'm probably going to forget. So let's see how I actually connect this to my outputs. As you see, this is a content tracker, for example. These are some videos that I have um, set up and I want to show you this BASP system demo part one, which is exactly what I'm shooting right now. For this video, I actually have all my captured sources available under that video template. And this is all set up through a template, which means 
if I create a new video and I just click it once, it will all populate for me, which is amazing. For my BASP system demo, I've actually captured all these things, which is basically, for example, the course units and uh, some articles and even a note that I took myself. I can also directly see what those notes relate to. They relate to my, for example, build your second brain and related area is here, for example, productivity. I can see their URLs if I want to follow up on them, but as well, I can open them right here and for example, see exactly what are the contents of that note. And additionally, I can then use that directly to start writing my script. I actually, this, what you see, this template is a modified version of Ali Abdul's plus Thomas Frank's plus some other templates that I found online for creating a YouTube script. But this addition on top with the building a second brain stuff is actually what I've done myself. And just to summarize, I have a content tracker where I have all my captured sources feeding into. I have a knowledge hub where I capture everything from books, from articles, from podcasts, and so on and so forth. I have a task list, which I actually interact with and do my tasks. I have projects where I can see all my active projects and I can see all the tasks, notes, and everything that relate to those projects. I have areas that are ongoing and are just like projects, but, but they don't have end date. And I also have resources. Resources for me, I actually skipped this so far, but resources for me are just basically reusable pieces of content like templates, blueprints, workbooks, and stuff that I can go back and refer to. And finally, I have the archive and I just showed you how I archive everything just with a simple tick box. And this might actually look quite complicated, but after you set it up once, using it is actually super simple because the way I use this is never through this interface. I have set it all up in my second brain, but the way I use it is always through my dashboard. And the way my dashboard works is I have tasks for my, for example, personal to do's. And then here I can just come and quickly see what I need to do. I can always switch to, a, for example, calendar view to see all my active tasks tasks that I need to work on. Additionally, if I want to take a quick note, for example, I can always click this, put whatever I want here related to an area, related to a content or a project and why I captured it. And it will be automatically moved to my second brain. Same thing with quick tasks. And I can also access everything here. So for example, I want to see, hey, what, what is the status on a project? I can always go to my project, see my energy levels on that. And for example, open it and see what I have actually captured under that project. So I know I gave you guys a lot of information and I hope it was valuable and you guys maybe learned a few things. Um, I actually have a lot of other things such as a habit tracker or a weekly reviews set up, which automatically will uh, bring everything up for me to show me what I've captured in the past week, review them and archive them if I need to or relate them to a project or area or content. But I won't cover those in this video because this video is already long. And, and just let me know if you guys want to hear more about this or you want me to showcase any specific aspect again or how to set this up yourself. And yeah, that's about it. So that was it. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys loved it, give me a like, a subscribe even. And if you didn't like it and you want to talk about this, leave a comment. I'll be on there and answering your questions or just chatting with you guys myself. I'll be posting a ton more content around this and around my other businesses and how I actually started as a complete noob, not knowing how to make any money online to running actually two successful businesses. So catch you guys in the next video. Bye.